books to do things that you, can, you have to practice. Mm. Uh, way back in the days when I was like 10 years old, you know, like my mom would use all these books about, like, you know, Lotus 1 to 3 and things. And I wouldn't look at the books, but I wouldn't be, I would just say, why don't you like go in front of the computer and actually try to mess about the menus and learn, you know, a few things that you can try and, and you get more hands on experience because Everything is about expectation models in your brain. I mean, the way training works, if you're supposed to get an expectation in your brain, what happens if I click this, what, what happens if I click that? And you have to actually try it. And trying to memorize text is not exactly going to allow you to build this mental picture of what the application is doing. So when you look at an application, you're supposed to kind of know what the menus are, what menus are available, and where you can click and what it's going to do. This is why when you face an application for the first time, you don't really know what's going on. You just loads of like buttons and stuff, and you try to find an orientation of what's left before you. Uh, and then to work with a book, even with program, now, uh, if if it's if it's electronically uh, available, then you can at least copy and paste the code and try and run it locally in your computer and actually see for yourself what it's doing. Uh, which which is necessary because you have to practice with the editor as well to actually know how to. Sit down, you know, what buttons to click, how to save, how to open, how to debug, how to open the terminal window or so so this is this is one of the reasons I I I, I actually quite like the YouTube uh, tutorials because they, they work with you and they show you things as they go along basically. And this is and the reason you did, you didn't have these things before is because all you had for a video was your television and the television wouldn't show you like, you know, curl tutorials and things because there was no airtime for these type of things. So people just buy books, and go through courses, and then have a person like you know draw on the board and delete the blackboard, and just like maybe put a projector up and give you notes and lecture notes. So it's, it's, I don't think it's a very. Uh, I think I think trying to go back to books is a bit more like legacy or uh, almost uh, uh, almost nostalgic, to be honest. Trying to stick to pen and paper and taking notes. And I, I I don't think there is. Any reason to go backwards to something which was less, which was, which was based on restraints and constraints and all kinds of stuff. One of the things you still see loads of is people making PDFs available with pay, pagination. Well, what, what's pagination? It's because you ran out of dead trees. You have to to have another leaf of that tree to to write the next piece of text. There is no reason for it. I mean, the only section that actually makes sense to cut it is something like a section or a uh, chunk of data. So. The way to organize a document is not just pagination. It's actually a lot of work to try and work out how to lay out the, uh, you know, as you add text, as make, making sure you, you don't cut the sentence in the middle too, too badly. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work if you put a 200 page document to, to start to do the pagination. You have to go page by page and make sure it doesn't cut up in a, in a nasty and useful way. And, 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 and what for? Really, what for? I mean, you don't have to put it in paper form. You just upload the paper anyway. Well, this sort of uh, hope, well, I was hoping this would bring on to the next topic, lovely, and you've sort of a little bit embarrassed me here, Roy, because I've now lost the link to what I was going to speak about next, and it was very uh, just a very quick mention about a site called Code Academy, and I've been looking for the link, and I cannot find it. It's not codeacademy.com, which I assumed it was. Um, it's something I picked up on Google+, and uh, one of the people who I conversed with uh, drew my attention to it, and it's, it actually teaches... Its main intent at the moment is just to teach Java, and um, it teaches it in very much the same way that you've been describing just uh, just a few minutes ago, Roy, by way of example, interaction, uh, and it's very different to a book. And it was absolutely fantastic, not particularly so because it was Java. I would have preferred for a new user uh, to cover something like Python. I would always champion Python if you're trying to teach somebody who maybe has done very little or no programming at all. And it's, I can't find the link anywhere, so I'm going to have to put that in the show notes as soon as I find it. I was, while you were talking, I was trying to go through my Google Plus and yeah. my stream. Well, first, one of the channels, the, uh, the tutorials in Java, um, it isn't very formal, but I suppose it's just about as formal as a teacher is saying for you. So it's well, exactly scripted. But they, they basically show you examples, and one of the things they used to do with, with generally with all kinds of topics of interest in learning, and sometimes would work in certain links in a very mechanical way on the side. And my other screen will basically have one of those videos, so I will just kind of listen and watch. Uh, mm. both. I mean, the the one thing that the the World Web is excellent at is producing excellent examples of just what you've been explaining. There's um, 
a very, very good series of tutorials that I saw many, many years ago, which I've been giving to people who are interested in learning Python in this example. And it was by Google. I can't remember for the life of me which employee from Google it was, but well, it was. They have the maker of Python now. What's his name, Lars something, I think? I, I can't remember who did these particular lectures, but it was a series of lectures on YouTube, and uh, he's a Google, he was working for Google, and uh, he had a very, very good style of uh, producing the, the notes and going through topics and skirting over subjects which really people didn't need to know in the first couple of lessons and confuse things. He had a very good teaching style, and I always used to recommend that as a starting point, but I just uh, I haven't got those links to hand either. Um, maybe that's something we can look at in the future because there are so many decent resources on the net now for uh, for learning a language or learning a utility or package. So uh, one maybe thing you could do, even if you start in a very, and what I would suggest usually to people who haven't programmed before is take a working program, change the code, see the behavior. I know one of the guys who uh, who's a lawyer working around the open source community. Uh, he's based in Australia. I can't remember his name now. He started a kind of a, he called it Python for kids, did you see that? One? Yes, I think this was mentioned on Pygame um, yes. website, I think. So he's, uh, he's trying to bring uh, uh, children to learn how to program using Python. Uh, and, and again, he's, he's creating examples for people, and trying to get them to change the uh, code and see the, the behavior change it. Do you remember the OLPC and one of the visions they had of the kids kind of changing the code slightly, trying to make things uh, behave differently, to make them a bit more technical? That was one of the goals of uh, One Left the Third Child, if, if you were conceptualizing it back in 2007, maybe? Yeah, you see, you see that this is this is probably something that we're going to, in fact, I certainly think we should uh, bring this up on, a, on another show. Um, but our views separate here slightly, Will, because I think the worst way to learn how to code is to look at somebody else's example and to modify it and see what happens. I think that leads to a lot of misconceptions. Yeah. Some, some uh, very, even, even Bill Gates actually worse. <laughs> no, even, Stol basically he was agreeing with Stallman way back in the days before he became a monopolist. Uh, so, so they were both realizing just looking at other people's code. That I think, I think that sorry, sorry, but I, th I think that works very well when you already have a solid grounding in a certain language. So, if you already have a, an understanding of the basic principles of that particular language, then yes, look at other people's code, see how the work, how it works, pick it apart, modify it, make you th make your own version better. No problem at all. I think for a brand new beginner, there's nothing more confusing than looking at somebody else's code, which probably is very disorganized and very badly badly produced and uh, with all sorts of bad habits uh, I think that's probably the worst way and it certainly wouldn't work with most languages that yeah, I've used over the years. There is certain basic, uh, one of the issues and one of the reasons not every person can become a programmer uh, is if you start asking, if people start asking what's, what is top, what is the CPU, what is RAM, why does it run out of memory, and what's the difference between disk space and my disk and my memory, if you don't know those they don't know the difference between those things. And I see loads of, I actually see programmers sometimes who don't, who don't really know the difference. Like they, they think this space and memory is something quite similar. And some of them might be even using Java because Java is, is very abstract. It actually hides many of these details, even as garbage collection. So you don't, you don't have to think about addresses where you put things and about buffer overflows and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but if you don't know the basics of these things, yes, you, you probably will struggle at some stage because you will come across an algorithm and and, and even the types of, like, you don't really know if you should use an integer or a double, or you don't really know the difference. So, yes, there is some ba basic knowledge, I guess, but once, but this is the type of thing you could learn in a tutorial in, like, less than a week or a few days, just teaching the basics. But, I mean, it's, it's uh, certainly, I think, in respect of high-level languages, you've got more chance of being able to pick apart some of these codes. It's certainly in respect of Python, for example, that's pretty much basic English, and you can get a general idea, even if you have no clue as to, uh, or no experience with, Py with Python coding, you can get a rough idea of what a program does uh, by looking at the, the source code, rough idea. Um, however, where the whole principle of modifying code comes apart is things like when you're looking at assembly language, and I would suggest that even the simplest of assembly language programs would be a completely alien to anybody, even if they were fiddling around with it, trying to alter it, it's completely different to the sort of standards language that they're used to speaking in. So, I don't know, I, 
I, I think I think once you've got the basic groundwork there and you understand loops, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then yes, fine, you can go and look at somebody else's code. But until that point, the worst way to learn is by, I, I think, looking at other people's code, especially when, if they're anything like me, it certainly doesn't stick with convention.